Hey there guys, um, my name is Danielle Upshaw and this is the very first video for my new YouTube channel, Singing Creek Farm. And I don't know about you, but when I was thinking of how exactly I was going to start this, my first thought was not to do it in the bedroom. Don't worry, it's not that kind of channel. So when I was thinking of really starting up this channel, I realized I really wanted to do an introduction, let you all know who I am, how we got here, and what we're going to be doing while you're along this journey with me. So in order for this story to begin, we have to go back to my childhood. I was raised here in beautiful East Tennessee. I grew up in Johnson City and then in Gray, and I come from a very Southern family. Now my father is a bit of a Yankee, but he was very quickly adopted into the South around the age of 20, so we're going to excuse him for that and give him forgiveness. Um, but don't worry, it did not taint my blood. I am Southern to the core. <laughs> you can just ask anyone who was around my four-year-old accent. <laughs> I was about as country as a biscuit next to sweet tea in the middle of a Southern summer day. So. Growing up, I was raised here in the South, um, but I was homeschooled. I was one of seven children. Um, I was one of four children until I was about 14 years old, and then my family adopted three wonderful children, um, a sibling group from Ethiopia, and our family instantly grew by three, and we've just been rocking and rolling with it ever since. Um, I would say I grew up in an area as far as food goes because a lot of this channel is going to be about food where convenience became one of the very first factors people thought of when they were thinking of food and deciding what to eat. It was how convenient is it to get it, how cheap, you know, all of those sort of things. Um, which, you know, did make sense because there was um, lots of economic decline and things were all over. So, I mean, we can't blame people for that. And at the time, I don't think people realized what all was going into these processed foods that were making them so convenient. And I didn't really get as exposed to that as a lot of my peers because I wasn't part of the big family and a Southern one where we were all raised to do things from scratch. I don't really remember my mom using boxed cake mixes, biscuit mixes. I'll be honest, I was far too old before I realized that you could even buy powdered uh, mashed potatoes. I didn't realize that like you could make them any other way than just by peeling and boiling them and adding butter and cream and mixing them. <laughs> you know, I had no idea. Um, if anything, I was a bit ignorant about exactly how the world ran because my mom made pretty much everything from scratch because that's how she was raised and it was honestly so much cheaper. We never really went out to restaurants because as a family of nine, it was super expensive. Um, I also grew up with my granny before she passed. Um, always in her garden. She was always canning. I mean, we were always either in the kitchen or doing something with our hands or out in the garden when we were at my granny's house. And that's just kind of how I was raised. We always had a garden in the summer, spring and fall. Um, my granny always did. We were always pulling things from it, cooking from it. Everything was pretty much from scratch. My mom pretty much made all of our breads from scratch. I knew how to make fresh pasta in high school. Like, I'm just trying to explain kind of where I came from. And I'm not saying that this was necessarily something to brag about, although I guess maybe it is, but I don't think it really hit me what the normal food system is like in our society until I started going to college and really realized that a lot of people don't know how to do stuff from scratch. They don't know how things grow. They don't know um, the ingredients and in things. People don't routinely read the labels on the back of the things that they're purchasing on the store and they just don't even realize things like margarine is not butter. They think that that's a butter substitute, but it's really not. It's just homogenized oils. So there's so many different things about the food system that really started to get new to me as I was the one who had to shop and provide and prepare meals and things like that. And at the same time, 
during my childhood as I was growing up, I didn't ever really think I was gonna stay here. I kind of really loved um, marketing and media. I loved doing TV things. My mom and I were actually on a reality TV show for baking for a stint. I'd say the name here, but I don't know if I'm allowed to, but I'm on Hulu, so you can go look over there. 10 year old ago me, was, well, I wasn't 10, it was 10 years from now ago. Um, 10 years in the past, that's a much easier way to say it. Um, anyway, it's one of those embarrassing fun moments. Um, my claim to fame, so to say, but um, I never really thought I was gonna stay. I always thought that I was gonna go to college here to save money and then move to a big city somewhere, climb the corporate ladder, and that was gonna be my destiny. And I was gonna do it all while looking super cute in some heels. And I didn't realize how much at the time that I was a huge people pleaser. And I really love to have that check mark of, oh, you've done a good job, here's a check mark. Oh, you got a promotion, check mark. You like have this label on your name, so that means check mark. And I think that's really what I was chasing. And I didn't even really realize that, whether that was something I would truly love to do or not. And if that was really something that was gonna feed my soul. And then while I was in college, I met my handsome athlete of a husband named Brian, and we ended up getting married before I was even finished with college. I had one year left, I was in my senior year, and um, that really made me get anchored here because his family's from here as well. He grew up in Kingsport and he has a local teaching job and that you know provided a really solid source of income for us um and so i graduated college wasn't able to find a really good media marketing sort of um job here locally so i ended up applying for a real estate team locally and it was a much bigger team and it had a lot more of that kind of corporate feel that I was kind of chasing before, of getting the titles, getting that check mark, you know, climbing the corporate ladder, so to say. And I did that for a long time, and it really started to just drain on my soul. I am a black and white person when it comes to my morals and ethics, and I was living in a world where gray was the way to go. And it was really hard for me over and over again to see myself getting financially punished for really standing by what I felt was right. And it became where it was just really hurting on me. The culture of the place I was in was just very dysfunctional and not something that was blessing my life or feeding it well. And so I ended up going independent on my own and that really brought me a lot of relief. But I started realizing at that point that I still felt kind of lost. And I realized that I had been putting almost my whole identity, my whole entire life into who I was gonna be growing up based on my job title. So I was at this point, um, I was pregnant with my first child and I was really feeling kind of lost. And um, I was actually folding laundry in this room, which is why we're here in my bedroom today. Um, and I, looked at, I was just kind of ruminating. I could feel my heart stirring for a while and I was just trying to anchor it to something. I felt like it was ready to be anchored into, you know, kind of really what my calling was. And I was just kind of waiting for that to happen. Um, but I was in this room and I was folding laundry and I looked at this cedar chest that I'm on for what felt like the very first time and I kind of pondered on it and I felt like God was kind of drawing me to my cedar chest and I was like okay I need to listen to this and as I was looking at it I was kind of remembering you know exactly what this cedar chest is so uh, when I was about five years old I was in my granny's front living room in East Tennessee I was looking out over her garden and this I don't know if it was this exact cedar chest because there's a few of them in my family but there was one sitting under a windowsill and she opened it up and got a blanket out of it and I little five-year-old me was just astonished because I always thought that it was just a table I wasn't allowed to climb on I was the climbing child of the bunch and there were lots of surfaces I was not allowed on <laughs> Um, and the cedar chest was one of them because apparently I would get on it and then climb the window. Um, and so I always just thought it was a table and she said, well, yes, it, it holds lots of things. Did you know you're going to get one one day? 
and she then explained what a cedar chest is and that um, they've been handed down through my family for generations through my mom and grandfather's side and it's a very common thing in Southern tradition, more in the past than it was now. Um, and it's where when you have a baby girl, you get yourself a cedar chest and it stays somewhere in the house. And as time goes on, cause you know, people were real wealthy. When someone got married, it's not like they suddenly had all this money and stuff that they could throw at them. So over time, what they would do is that if they had, as they had extra, find good deals on things for the household, the kitchen, cooking, mending, sewing, anything like that, they would put it in the chest and they all have locks on them too. I'm gonna give you a good shot of this at the end. Um, but I had to frame it so I could fit <laughs> in it as well and have somewhere to sit. Um, but basically over time they fill up the chest with household goods and things like that. And then when um, the woman got married or moved out on her own, it was basically her starter kit, her household homemaking starter kit. And it wasn't just what was in the box or the box itself, it was the knowledge that went along with it. Um, because that there was that mindset and that that uh, you know tradition of passing things down, um, it would come with recipes and you would have already made them. You would have known exactly how to make it and you just needed the measurements of things written down. Um, you would already know how to sew and mend with the things in there. You would already know how to garden with the tools put in there and the seeds and, and all the stuff for the kitchen. You would already know how to use it because it was taught to you. So it wasn't, it wasn't just the stuff. It was what it meant and what it resembled and kind of that whole kind of culture of passing down the tools and the skills um, and as I was looking at it I just realized that that's really what I wanted that there were a lot of things that had proverbially proverbially if I can say it been put in my chest that I had let sit there for a while that I had let gather dust and that weren't really doing anything and that's really what I wanted I wanted to start to learn and hone my skills as far as doing things myself I wanted to get in the kitchen more experiment more learn how to do things from scratch I wanted to have a bigger garden I wanted to not have to rely on the grocery store for everything and that's really kind of what I wanted and a few years later after I started really practicing and leaning into this and having kind of that be more of my identity so to say although truly my identity is in Christ but on this earth I needed a purpose and that's kind of what my purpose was and as I was having children I really wanted them to grow up in that kind of manner as well um, but a few years later I discovered the term homesteading and all these different YouTube channels and books and blogs and all sorts of this stuff out there and I realized wait a minute that's it <laughs> there's a name for it there's a culture surrounding it I'm not alone I knew I wasn't alone but just having a label on it and having kind of that thing that already existed really streamlined access to new knowledge a community of other people who wanted to do the same things books I mean it was just amazing I'm not the first one to compare languages to skills so I can't be the one to take credit for that if I knew who it was I would quote them officially but that said it is true that you can lose a language within one generation of the family if someone lives elsewhere and they speak a language there and then move here to the United States if they don't work to keep that language through the generations it can be lost within just one generation and then that that language is lost and it is the same with skills and if there are things like you're not having your kids in the garden with you you're not having them in the kitchen um, they're all about the new technologies that the world has today, which is great to offer, but you're going to forget there's going to be a one generation and it's lost forever. That's one of the main reasons that I want to do this channel is I feel like there were a lot of things that I didn't lose because of the upbringing I had. And I really want to share that with others. And I know there's some things that my grandmother did that and even the ones before them that was lost and even just new skills and things out today that I would really love to learn and grow in that. So I would love to share with you the knowledge I do have and I would love to also um, grow that and allow you all to come along with me on the journey. Um, this is gonna be a very realistic kind of style of homesteading and I don't mean to say that as that how other people are homesteading isn't realistic as well. It's realistic to them. But most of the channels I have watched, people have these like 
50 acre homesteads. It's like their full-time job. And that's not really where we're at here. <laughs> this is really something that I kind of do on the side or just make a part of our daily lives. And it's focusing more on the small things like, hey, what can you replace from your grocery shopping list by just making it yourself? And I really think that a lot of people have kind of gotten into this after the pandemic. And I think it really scared people, warranted, that uh, when they went into the store, there were a lot of things missing when just one piece of that food system chain fell apart. And I think it made a lot of people realize that our food security isn't as great as we thought it was. So I just want you to sit back for a minute and I want you to remember what it felt like going into the grocery store, seeing bread off the shelf, milk gone, dairy products. I don't know about you, but in my store, meat, bread, and dairy, and then pastas were like the first things to go and toilet paper, but we're not gonna make our own toilet paper. We're not there yet. <laughs> um, but I want you to then imagine, okay, you go into the store, you see those things are gone and you're like, okay, Instead, I'm gonna go to the baking aisle and I know how to use this bag of flour. In fact, it's cheaper than a loaf of bread and it makes me like five loaves of bread per bag of flour. I'm gonna buy this and some yeast. I have the rest of what I need at home and I've got bread for my family. It didn't stress you out, you already knew how to do it. And it also enabled you to make pizzas and other things for your family um, that were all just different bread products. What if you were already buying um, fresh milk from someone down the road who had a dairy cow and they had extra milk and you're helping um, supplement their feed costs by buying the extra milk from them? What if you had already found a local um, beef farmer and you were buying a quarter, half of a cow once a year and you had a chest freezer full of hamburger and, and some steaks and stuff? What if you had four or six chickens in the backyard weren't much work for you and you got a dozen eggs every other day. Like what would that have done to your mindset when the pandemic hit and those chains in our food system fell and you went into the grocery store, saw what was missing, but you already had all those other things set up and going. What if you already knew how to turn that milk that you were getting from the dairy farmer into yogurt, into cheese with a very little effort, you had already developed those skills. What would that have done? Now, I'm not a prepper, but I am the kind of person that likes to be a little bit more reliant on myself than on these big corporations who decide what we get to eat based on what's at the, sh at the grocery store. Not to mention all of these things that you can make at home pretty easily instead have so many less ingredients and you can pronounce all of them, which in turn is a lot better for our land. It's a lot better for our bodies and it ends up being a lot better for our souls as well. So the very last part of this journey that I almost forgot to tell you is why we're called Singing Creek Farm. So we actually live in a neighborhood and after we had lived here for a few years, we have about a half acre on just the land our house sits on. The farmland behind our house came up for sale and we purchased just below five acres of it. And on that land, there is a spring and a creek that runs through the bottom of it. And shortly after we bought it, my husband and I were sitting down there and it was quiet and just to hear um, there's lots of blackberry bushes down there. So there's tons of birds, there's lots of animals around, there's the burbling um, spring feeding into the creek, there's like the little waterfalls and just anytime you hear water moving, it's just so soothing to the soul. And as I sat there, I was just like, oh, this is like the song of my soul. Like this just, just that feeling that that gave me just sitting there in the sun and just listening to that happiness that was screaming from the earth and um, that's when we decided to call it Singing Creek. That's what we named our little tiny farm and um, that's the name I want to continue here as well. So thank you for joining me. It means so much that you all um, encouraged me to do this and that all of the pieces are fitting together right now for it to work. Um, I really, really would appreciate any support you all have by subscribing and sharing 
Um, as the economy grows and shifts, so does our lives and my kids are getting older and eat a lot more. <laughs> um, and I would really love for this to be a way to help supplement some income for my family to help keep me home with the kids so I can continue to be a stay at home mom and keep having this in real estate be what funds that. So this is me. This is how we got here. I'm so excited to go on this journey with you guys. 